tubes I got a call for a walking box that keeps icing up so let's get out there and find out why the walking box is icing up that's gonna be our call for today and I'll bring you guys along for the journey There you go, Tippy. I'm gonna get some gloves. Glove box is falling apart. Here's the unit. I just pulled the disconnect. It was running. I'm gonna take the lid off. We'll get gauged up on this thing, and then we'll we'll take a look at the the whole system here. skeleton of a snake no way but it is check it out snake skeleton no it's a rat that's a rat skeleton I thought it was a snake but that's a rat big buck teeth rat skeleton Tricked out like it was a rat. I mean, a snake. Yeah. Contactor probably needs to be changed for sure. Okay, here's where we're at. I got the gauges hooked up. I got the probes hooked up so I could get a superheat, uh, compressor superheat reading and a subcooling reading. Um, thought I brought the probes in. I'm gonna get the probes so I can get an evaporator superheat reading. Let me go get those. That's a 7,000 BTU compressor. that 
frost pattern. And then I'm get my flashlight here. Super plug at all. right here look at see the thermostat line oh maybe suction pressure just falling let's see if we can get a look at the state of this sight glass here oh yeah flashing big time Yeah, we're down to a two degree evaporator. See that? And if we go here, look at the superheat at the compressors at 70. So. That's our issue. We're low on charge. I'm gonna grab a leak detector and do some preliminary sniffing around that evaporator section. I really don't see any oil stains on the micro channel. We're gonna give that a wash out too. Let's go get the H10. Let's talk about uh, iced up coils on a walk-in box real quick. Um, we'll go over a few things that I like to check is the, the basics is the evaporator coil dirty that's one thing to check number two is the door gasket in good shape on that walk-in box just real basic stuff number three is the charge like we're finding on this unit this unit is low on charge is the condenser dirty 
is the thermostat set too low. That'll cause an iced up coil. Uh, an improperly operating TXV will cause coil ice ups. Another thing I found also is how often are they in and out of the box? Is it a high traffic box? If it's a high traffic box, we probably need a defrost timer on there. And this box does not have a defrost timer, but it also does have a refrigerant leak, which we're going to check right now. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff I'm, I'm missing and I'm forgetting right now. It's, my brain's just thinking too fast. Um, a leaking solenoid valve can cause an ice up coil. A lot of the times we'll think it's a bad thermostat when it's actually the solenoid valve leaking by. I've had that happen quite a bit. And when I was younger, I would get recalls on that because I would think it was the, a bad thermostat when it was actually the solenoid valve leaking by. And that's one that can burn you a bunch. And those are some other things to check on there too. So let's grab the leak detector here. I want to grab the H10 today and uh, let's get it fired off and I'm going to start at the evaporator section first. off those other return bins. Silt bubbles. Those two return bins for sure. Maybe this guy too, see? was the home run. That return bin right there is the home run. Alright, let's get some soap bubbles. We've, we, the leak detector has done its job now. Now we're on soap bubble mode and we can check outside too. 
if there's uh, see if the outside picks up any detections. It doesn't matter if it's Trenton or Bone, they all leak. Maybe I should try a Danfoss coil. The Optima by Danfoss. I saw the ad in the contractor magazine. Hmm. Let's do some sniffing down here too. Mr. Micro channel. These are notorious for leaking. These valves right here. For as much as we complain about the micro channel, the evaporator coils leak more. Uh oh, we're getting a hit right there too. I could have sworn it sped up right there. Let's go back over that. Yeah, as much as we complain. Right in there. One little hit. You hear that? We gotta put some soap bubbles right there. Let's run it through there again. Right in there. Pull it away for a sec. It's a tiny little sniff right up here. We're gonna have to spray that with some soap bubbles. With the new Calgon Cow Blue Plus for professional use only. Sorry, Sideshow Bob. Sorry about that. All right, let's see what we get into here. I was getting a little Mr. Sniffy Summers up here. 
We'll see if uh, we can see any bubbles. Mm -hmm. And we'll go inside and check too. All right, let's see what we get on these return bins here. Yeah, that one there was super bubbler. Oh yeah, I can see it bubbling right now all over the place. Look at it. That one's a bubble factory. I know this one was a leaker. Maybe the neighbor right there. That return bin's a big old leaker. Let's get the wires out of the way so you guys can see it. That thing is bubble fact bubble factory here. Big bubble factory. And we knew there were some other ones leaking too. That are smaller bubble factories. Yeah. That whole thing is a sieve. I still gotta check the other side. I gotta get the ice off the other side and check it. I don't know if these ones are leaking or if it was just picking it up, but it looks like little bubbles. Get this ice off. And then we'll take a look at this side. Back on this side, so leaker. See all the micro bubbles? Leaker. Biggest leaker is that guy. And then a little bit up here on this guy. This one, that one's big time. This guy, and then this guy.
This guy right here, and that guy. All right, we're gonna go ahead and recover the gas out of here. It's already fractionated. I'm gonna try and, and solder up a couple of those return bins uh, until the new coil comes in. They don't have one in stock right now. Baby flow. I got the nitrogen going. 
I'm letting it equalize out right now and then we're gonna get the soap bubbles and we'll check our work and check our bird turd. Somewhere's around, I feel like it's gonna level off at 185, 184. Somewhere's right in there. There's plenty of pressure. looking good let's see how our bird turd made out inside the quill maybe we fixed it or made it worse okay we got mega pressure in there let's see if we got it to slow down a little bit I still got one little bubbler right there see that side which we can get that's not a problem Hit that we got this one on the top right here is bubbling and that's about it just those two spots yep one little bubbler right there and then one on the bottom right there that dude and then this dude right here piece of cake Let's go. There we go. Get me at least a 150. I think that'll do it right there. All right, see how many bubbles we got. Second time was the charm. Yep. All right. Second time was the charm. That'll buy us some time till we get the freshy coil. Nice. Get it on the vacuum, or they want to get their box cooling. It's getting to be their busy time, and I'm in the way, and I, I can feel the tension. I'm starting a little DK test. We'll see how we make out here. All right, at the 10 minute mark, we might have dropped 0.4. That's very minuscule. So I'm going to recycle. You guys ever recycle your nitrogen? Watch this, clean this box up. Nitrogen recycle. Mm. 
is going to pull a vacuum through the manifold. And I'm going to recharge this with 448A. Um, this is a temporary repair until the new evaporator coil comes. This should get things going pretty good here. So we'll pull a vacuum and we'll get it recharged up. I got the sun gel out, we're going to wash the coil, all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, the recycle got this cleaned up pretty good. Pretty good clean out with the recycled nitrogen. I got it on the vacuum pump right now. Gotta pull it back and then we'll recharge it. Oh, you're pulling out the old stuff. That's already pulled out okay. when we made the repair. And then we'll wash the coil, get it all up and ready for the gusto. Let's get the scale. Scaler. See how much charge this unit takes. Probably not very much. I'm thinking very little on the charge mode out here. Zeroed out. Get a pound or two through the high side here, then we'll fire it off. A half a pound. Remember what the pressure switch made? Just about one pound. We'll get two pounds in and fire it up. Pound and a half. Pound and three quarters. And two pounds. Okay. Two pounds to the high side. Let's see. All right, we're gonna restart. We're finding tippins. The mirror, the retractable mirror. See that? is at 47 degrees we're just up and running it's got a load on it 25 degree evaporator 102 condensing a little closer there we're still flashing which is normal because the box is hot I'm just gonna let it work for a while let it work and pull down you can see it's flooding back with that 404 TXV and so I will have to adjust it down. That's usually what I find. Yeah, 13.6 superheat at the compressor. You can see it's sweating. You can see that pattern. We'll let the box pull down, let the valve pinch down, and then we're probably gonna have to pinch it down mechanically with the wrench here. That's usually what I find. Now the replacement coil, I ordered it with the uh, uh, 448 TXV, and we're going to do the thermostat with defrost. The A421 ABD O2C thermostat. So I like building up the little coils. Total charge came out to about 4.85 pounds. 
about right for that size receiver and everything. And I'm still letting the superheat adjust here. Pump down test. I turned it off at the thermostat. We'll see where it pumps down to. It shuts off. Hey, we are coming around. Not bad. Fire it back off and let it let it settle down and do its thing. Uh, I got the TXV adjusted a heat. I had to pinch it off a bunch to get us in range. And it's still it's still adjusting. I gotta let it I gotta let it rip here for a bit. Ton of, a ton of adjusting on the TXV. I got my compressor. We're reading the compressor superheat to make sure we're not flooding back our compressor or starving our compressor. I got it to 22.9, six degrees of subcooling. And it got me a 19.7 evaporator and about 100 condensing. And I've noticed when I do the 404 TXVs with the 448A, you got to end up pinching the valve down. And it takes a while to adjust it. All right, we're all pumped down, made it to set point. So that's my hack right there on a leaky coil, a coil coming. It's not in stock right now. Patched it up as good as I could. And uh, converted it to 448. And when I do that, I don't care about my evaporator superheat. I'm worried about my compressor superheat, the compressor not flooding back, usually is what happens. The new coil, when it comes, we'll have a 448 TXV and we have, we'll be all dialed in nice. I still never picked up a leak on that coil, the condenser. So that's weird. It's all pumped down right now. At set point, and uh, we'll be waiting on the new evaporator coil. If you haven't yet, hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, there's a subscribe button down there in the corner. Click that subscribe and help a brother out. And we will see you on the next video. I got that one done at six o'clock. Now I gotta go look at an ice maker. I'll bring you guys along for the ice maker. All right, hush sake that keeps icing up. It's got some decent looking ice right there. Let's see where the bin stats at. Okay, it's up there. Right there is our bin stat, so that's good. Take it apart and see how dirty it is. Let's go grab tippins. Oh yeah, tippy.